going to do a capacitor and dielectric problem of this sort. We're going to have a capacitor, and I'm going to give you the area, surface area, of the capacitor. Let's say the surface area of the capacitor is 2 meters squared, so it's going to be a large capacitor here. And then the distance between the plates is going to be 0.5 meters. Let's make it even less. Let's make the distance between the plates 0.1 meter. Okay. So uh, now I'm going to connect the capacitor to a 12 volt battery. Okay. And then I'm going to ask some questions about this. A, what is the capacitance of this capacitor? B, what is the charge on the plate? What is the charge on the plate and the energy stored in the capacitor? Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the battery and then put in a dielectric in there. So dielectric is going to be coming from the side. Let's say the dielectric constant of the dielectric is 2. So put in the dielectric in there and then answer the same questions. What is the capacitance of this capacitor? What is the charge on the plate? And the energy stored in the capacitor. So let's analyze that. Okay. So uh, initially we solve for the capacitance. A is 0 over D. We put the area which was 2 meters squared. E0 is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. E0 is the electrical permittivity of space, so you just put that in there. We're assuming first that it is vacuum between the two plates. The distance D is 0.1, so you're going to end up getting uh, 20 times 8.85. So you move the decimal point over. 177. 177. 10 to the minus 12, I can abbreviate that as a pico. So that's pico parents. So the capacitance of this will be 177 pico parent. Okay, then uh, what is the charge on the plate? Well, capacitance is defined as Q over delta V. So I've connected it to a 12 volt battery. So the charge is going to equal C times V. A lot of times, instead of delta V, we will just write V. So you're going to have two, uh, 177 times 12. So you're going to have 2124 picocoulomb. So the charge is going to be 2,124 picocoulomb, or you can say, go over to the left three times, 2.124 nanocoulomb is how much charge is stored in the capacitor. Then the potential energy of the capacitor, I could either do half CV squared or half Q squared over C or half QV, either one. So let's say I decide to do half CV squared so half times the capacitance times voltage squared. So you're going to have uh, 0.5 times 177 times 144. Okay, so that's going to be 12,744. 12,744, that's picojoules, or you could say 12.744 nanojoules. 
So that's how much energy is stored in the capacitor right now. Okay, now I disconnect the batteries. I insert the dielectric in there. So what's gonna happen? Well, when I insert the dielectric, the capacitance is gonna go up by a factor of kappa, okay? So C nu is gonna equal kappa A E zero over D. So essentially the capacitance is doubling. 177 double three, uh, 354, right? So we can call that C prime, 354 picofarads. What's happening to the charge on the capacitor? Well, since I've disconnected it, there is no new source of charge on the capacitor. The charge on the capacitor stays whatever it is. So when I install the dielectric in there, I'm keeping the charge the same. So Q prime is equal to the old Q, which was 2,124 picocoulomb. So what's gonna happen to the voltage? The voltage of the, di uh, of the capacitor goes down. Why? Because the dielectric, when you uh, watch my videos on dielectric and the theory behind dielectric, you see that the dielectric fights against the voltage of the original capacitor. So the voltage of the original capacitor goes down. So V prime, so look here, V is equal to Q over C, right? Q prime over C prime. Q prime stayed the same. C prime doubled. Okay, C prime doubled, it was 177, became 354. So what's the voltage gonna be? The voltage is gonna go to half of whatever it was. So it used to be 12 volts, so it's gonna be six volts. Okay, so the voltage across the, the capacitor has gone down. So what's the new energy? Okay. What's the new potential energy of the capacitor? The old potential energy was 12.744 nanojoules. The new potential energy, half C prime, V prime squared, half, well, we could do this in terms of ratio. The capacitors has doubled. The voltage has been half. So the new potential energy is equal to the two and the two cancel, and I have one fourth CB squared, right? The original uh, energy was one half CB squared, right? So what happened is the numerator got doubled, but the denominator is a four, right? So overall effect is that the potential energy dropped by a factor of two. So it's equal to one half of the original potential energy, which uh, if I divide this by two, I get 6.372 nanojoules, okay? So what does this mean? Is the dielectric gonna wanna come by itself or am I gonna have to push it, okay? The answer is the dielectric comes by itself because systems like to reach lower potential energy, okay? So I'm not even gonna have to push it. It just sort of goes by itself. I'm not gonna have to do work against the system. The potential energy of the system drops. So we could even uh, imagine this kind of a situation. Imagine if this one was uh, 100 gram dielectric originally moving with a speed of one centimeter per second, gently going, right? What would its velocity be when it reaches inside? V final. We could ask that kind of a question. Well, its velocity should increase, right? It's gonna cause the potential energy of the system to drop, and thereby it's gonna gain kinetic energy out of that. Okay, so what's gonna happen? Okay, so now uh, we say potential, uh, kinetic energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus change in potential energy of the capacitor dielectric system, right? Kinetic energy initial half times its mass, which was 100 grams, so that's 0.1 kilo.